Alright guys, what's up? Welcome back to part two of this series of how to build a calculator app in iOS. And I'm glad that you guys are joining me for a second half. Hopefully the first half uh, covered, you know, a lot of good details. Um, thank you guys for all the support I've been seeing on the channel lately. Um, we're up to 31 subscribers, which I know for most people is literally nothing. But I never would have thought, you know, a few months ago when I started this that I actually would have got to this point. So thank you and, you know, keep showing the support and I'll keep making these videos. So... Let's uh, get right into it. So we have a basic calculator app here, and it's just like the one that you get on iOS. And let's go ahead and go into View Controllers so we can set up all the functionality. All right, so now that we're actually in the back end that controls the View Controller, you'll notice there are no buttons or really anything at all. It's brand new, it's untouched. So first, let's uh, fix these brackets because I'm a heckler for brackets that look nice like this. Um, you know, let's do that. Let's remove this so we have a fresh start. And let's first start by going back to the view controller from before and dragging all the buttons and connecting them to the code. So let's go back here. So a quick little tip is you can actually hold the option key and go ahead and click on the class that you wanna open alongside your root controller. And it will bring up a nice extra window here for us to use. So let's make this a little bit bigger so it's easier to see. So what we're going to do here is connect every single button and the label to the code. So obviously to do that, you hold control, click on the button that you want to drag, go over here, um, make sure that it's set to action because we're not going to be changing the label on the button. We're just going to be setting an action for every single one. So I'm going to call this one uh, clear button and let's connect this one. So this is the buy button and obviously multiply minus and plus if you guys don't want to watch this part you can go ahead and skip ahead probably around a minute because i feel like that's how long it's going to take to set all this up or you know if you're following along then go ahead and just follow all these actions that i'm doing and set up every single button Okay, so now all we got left is just all the numbers. So let's just call it like it is. We'll call it one button and two button. Obviously, as you guys know, you can name it whatever you want. Um, I'm just naming this as simple as I can and something that's easy to remember. And one other thing that I noticed, it, it's kind of hard to, you know, keep track of everything once we have all these buttons on here. Um, and you want to make sure that when you're dragging over like this, don't, like, I know it's easy to do this. You can accidentally click, or, you know, where it turns green like this. This will actually connect um, this 7 button to the 5 button. So this class or sorry, this little method here will actually control both buttons, which obviously you don't want. So just be wary of that and try to keep it separately. Um, after a while, you get used to the spacing and you probably won't um, run into that issue much, but you know, just, just something to look out for. So as we finish up here, this is the ninth button. We have almost everything, but let's not forget about the label. So Obviously, we need this to be displayed. So we're just going to call this um, calculator display. Great. So let me go through quickly and fix all these brackets and make everything nice and organized, and I will be right back. All right, guys, now that we have all this stuff looking nice and neat and organized, um, let's go ahead and go to the top of the class, and we're just going to call some variables that... Um, we'll control everything and obviously these need to be available to all the different methods so that every button that's accessed can change these variables you know wherever they are in the class so to begin with i'm going to go up here and call my first variable i'm going to name it first because the first sign of input that the user enters so obviously when you open your app you know you might type in one and then you know plus one Obviously that first number needs to be stored in its own variable. And then 
the operation is separate, and then another number needs to be stored in another variable. So to do that, we're going to call another variable called second. You might look at this and ask yourself, why would he declare these as you know strings and or initialize them as strings when we can do ints or doubles? And the reason for that is because the calculator display, the, all of that is text oriented, so it's easier to just have the numbers as uh, strings and then you know kind of convert as we go here. So we're gonna call those first two variables. Then we're going to actually need a variable to store what function is happening. So we're gonna call this one variable function. And we can just initialize that at you know an empty character. Then we're going to need another variable for result, because this is going to be the result of the calculation. And it looks like we have an error here. So let's just see this. It looks like it does not like that. So we're just going to go ahead and do an empty string. Um, I'm used to Java, and you can you know initialize characters, but Swift's a little bit different. So then. Finally, we're going to need a string variable for user input, and we're just going to call this user input. Initialize that as a string as well. So now we have all the variables that we should need, which is great. And now we have to actually go through what I like to start with is go to all the buttons, you know, one through nine, and kind of set it up as we go here. So if we start with number one, we need to first make sure that the uh, display is empty. So to do that, we got to type in calculator display dot text and set that equal to nothing. Then we have to, you know, add one to the user input, and user input is the string that keeps track of what's actually happening right here. So we're going to set user input plus equals, sorry, plus equals to um, one. And then we're going to update the calculator display with the user input. So calculator display dot text equals, or sorry, plus equals user input. So we're going to do a process like this for every single method. And it looks like we have an error here. So we're going to force unwrap it because we know that it will never be null since it's set literally right here, which is great. Um, you know, obviously this calculator display that text is only getting set when this button is clicked. And right before the text is set, user input is set rather than being null. So we know it will not be null and will therefore not produce an error. So we're going to do a very similar thing to this for every single number. So what I would recommend is you highlight these three lines, copy them, and just go ahead and paste it in numbers one through nine in all the functions, and then go back through later and change this one based on what number you're at. So let's go through here and just fix every number. Awesome, we are almost done. Okay, awesome. So obviously up to this point, all it is so far is that we've just didn't done a lot of stuff with the display, but we haven't really done a lot of math. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's start with, actually before we do that, let's go ahead and just set up some simple stuff like the clear button and what that's gonna do. So the clear button, you're obviously gonna wanna reset all the variables. So we're gonna do first equals null, second equals null. And sorry, I'm saying null even though it's not, it's just an empty string, I like to call it the same thing. I apologize if uh, I sound stupid to anybody, but uh, that's just kind of what I say. And we're gonna go ahead and do calculate display dot text equals blank or null, or actually, sorry, it's zero. Because when you open the app and you know, you're know performing your first calculation, it's, it's gonna be zero. This clear button should work fine. I should clear the display, reset all the variables, and we should be good to go to start another calculation. All right, and before I go over to divide button right here, uh, we actually forgot to add function as part of the variables that we want to clear. So let's not forget that. 
and then let's go over here to, to divide and begin with um, set it, telling the function what function we're actually running. So for this, we're going to set it to this slash here. And then we're going to set the first variable to whatever the user input is. So that we can kind of transfer that over. And then um, actually we're gonna have to erase whatever is stored in the user input. Because user input's the variable that kind of hands off between the two. So first is set when you choose your first function that you want to click. And then user input is null. And then the second variable is set after you click, you know, the equals button. So, you know, one divided by one, you would set it when you click divide and then set the second one uh, accordingly. So next we have the multiply button function and what we're gonna do here is obviously do the same thing as divide and kind of initialize function and set it to the function that we're using. Then set first to whatever user input is and then erase user input. And I realized that I can, you know, kind of just copy all these over, but I don't wanna go too fast and it's, it's not hard at all to do what I'm doing um, just as we're going here. It's a little bit different than what I did earlier with all that copying because there's nine different functions for the numbers versus just four of these. So let's, just, and we're almost done here. And finally, we have the plus button. And like I said before, just do the same thing as up there. Set the first variable and erase what is in the user input. Okay, so now we have the equals button, and that's going to be a little bit different than anything else that we've done up to this point. So first, we're going to have to set the second variable. So second is going to equal um, user input. Then we're actually going to have to convert the first numbers to doubles. So let's go ahead and do that. We're just going to declare two variables here. We're going to call it first input and second input. And that's just going to be initialize of really nothing. And it does not like that. So let's just be extra safe about it. Do second input and set it to 0, .0 .0 so that we are telling it that it's a double. So first, we're going to set the first input variable that we just called equal to um, our first variable that's holding the input from earlier. And then we're going to do as exclamation point, and we're going to cast it to a double. And we're going to do the same thing for the second one here. So second, second as double. Okay, so now that we have that, these converted now. Now we need some if statements to tell, you know, tell the program what we're going to do. So if the function is equal to, you know, plus, we'll start with plus because it's simple. We're going to set the result variable equal to um, the first input plus the second input. And then we obviously have to do display it on the screen. So calculator.txt equals results. And then we're going to concatenate it in a string. So let's go ahead and do that. Wrap it in a string and convert it likewise. So then that is all done. Then we're going to just do some else ifs here and call out the other scenarios and you guys could do a switch statement to whatever you want um, there's only a couple things here so i thought it might be easier to just do some else ifs but i could be wrong and then we're going to do a similar thing as earlier we're going to do first input minus the second input and obviously update the display wrap it in a string and then result and now that I see it, it actually might be smarter to say double and then wrap it like this. Because 
if you force cast it, it might cause an error and actually crash the app. So we kind of want to avoid that if we can and just do it like this. It's giving another error here. So I guess we're going to have to force cast it anyways. So let's go ahead and do that. And hopefully we don't get any errors. So then um, we need multiply and divide. So we're going to need our else if here. And then I'll just add an else finally down here. So here we go. Function equals multiply. Results is going to equal the first input times the second input. And then we're going to update the display. Okay. And then finally we have divide, which will fire if the other conditions do not meet. So then we're going to take the first input, divide it by the second input, and then update the display as well. And sorry guys if you hear any fan noise in the background, my uh, MacBook here um, tends to start getting a little sweaty because we're just, you know, taxing it so much. So I apologize if you hear anything. Hopefully the mic doesn't pick it up. All right, guys, next we have the decimal button, and I forgot about this earlier, and of course the zero, so let's do, uh, oop, not result, my bad. Um, we're going to have to do uh, the display. So calculator display dot text, and that's going to plus equal this decimal here. So we're gonna add that to the text. And on top of that, we're going to need to Put the user input and set that equal to a dot. And when you convert from a string to a double, if you know when using a decimal, if you have 3.1, um, I'm not entirely sure if that's going to convert correctly, but we're gonna have to test it later. So for now, let's just set it like this, and then go over here as well and do user input equals uh or sorry plus equals zero as a string calculator display dot text equals user input my bad up here i forgot this and of course i also forgot to erase whatever's on the display currently right above while this is clicked so go ahead and do that that should be all set and good to go we have our equals button and all these nice functions here so actually let's go ahead and give it a quick run and see if we can get it to work all right guys now we have the simulator showing up here so let's go ahead and try it so let's do one plus one that's awesome equals 2.0 let's do eight times four 32 that's great and Let's uh, also be wary, um, like I said earlier, uh, the decimal, we hope this works. So let's try to add 2.5 and 3.1 and equals 5.6. That's awesome. We, it's working great and we are good to go. All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this tutorial. Thank you for tuning in and thank you for all the love and support you've been showing me on the channel lately. If you like this tutorial, please drop a like on this video, drop a comment for any suggestions in the next video. Um, subscribe to my channel for more content like this. I'm going to be changing a lot of things up around here. I'm going to be adding a video, um, getting a new desk, new decorations. So we're going to have a new format and we're going to be talking about a variety of topics, not just tutorials on how to do projects. So there is a lot more to come and I hope that I can bring you guys great content. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.